We evaluate beans and come up with new bean lines that can keep up with industry standards in order to maintain a solid bean production industry here in Alberta. We make initial crosses based on pre-existing elite lines. So whatever is already being grown, we use as parents to make new crosses. You may have a bean variety that is high yielding, and that high yielding line may not have a good disease package. So we try and get disease resistance into these high yielding lines. Unfortunately, those high yielding lines then turn into a disease resistant low yielding line, which means we have to take this new line that we've created and bring it back into the high yielding line again and hopefully drag the disease resistance component with it. Beans are a self-pollinating plant and that means that the pollination occurs within the bud before it even flowers. So what we have to do is we have to find a bud that's young enough that it hasn't pollinated yet but old enough that it's not going to reject the pollen and just fall off and die. I am going to open up the banner, which is the outer envelope of the bud. And just pry it open gently. And then there's two petals inside called the wings. And I'm going to remove them, get them out of the way. A parent bean is the bean that we cross on to. Some are good parents, some are terrible parents, some of them are just like, get all of these off of me, and some are very nurturing and you get amazing results from them. I'm going to gently unravel the keel petal, which is what protects all the sexual organs of the bean. And it's a very delicate procedure. And then I'm going to remove all the male bits called the stamen and then we're just left with the female bit which what is what receives the pollen and it's called the stigma so now that we have the female bit of the female all exposed and ready we need to get the male part going which is the flower of the cross I'm gonna hold the banner down and pull the wings back and that's gonna expose the female part, so the stigma of the flower, which will have a bunch of pollen on it. And I'm then going to try and rub the pollen off onto the stigma of the bud. I'm then going to grab the stamen out of the flower. I'm then going to gently just set it inside the bud. So we've basically completed the cross, but now we just need to close it up. And then we're gonna give it a little spritz of water, just to keep it kind of moist, because if it dries out, then it has a higher chance of dying. And we put a little tape on it again, just to keep that moisture locked in there. And then grab a label. And we always put the plant that we crossed it onto on top. And there we have a cross. A baby bean is when you have a successful cross and then an itty bitty little bean grows. So we get the results from the cross, the new baby beans, and we grow them in the greenhouse. That seed gets collected and then we plant that in the field year after year after year for 10 years. Every generation reduces the cross breeding or the heterozygosity by 50%. Each successive generation, you're getting closer and closer to a true breeding um, homozygous line. It's actually very hard to make a cross and go, boom, there we go, that's what we wanted. It's an evolving process that takes years and years of maybe back crossing onto something and bringing something new in to bring everything back up to the standard quality with the problem that we're trying to solve. Hopefully. Our new lines are going to be out yielding and outperforming the ones, and then we have all the good stuff that we have crossed into it. 
being able to be released as a new line. And then those new lines get turned into parents for subsequent crosses. The ultimate purpose is to produce good bean varieties that are adapted to our southern Alberta environment, which is a very unique environment. First of all, we have the heat units required for beans. Uh, even with our early varieties, you still need a required number of heat units. We're also in a very arid area, so the color of the beans is very bright because they don't get a lot of rain on them. So we're into harvest at this point. Combines picking the beans up, they've been cut for a while. The impact that uh, the breeding program in Lethbridge has had on us is huge. We grow 100% of our bean varieties are, have come out of that program. What it's done is it's cut a week to two weeks off of our maturity. On top of the early maturity, we have not lost anything with yield either. In fact, our yields have consistently risen year to year, so it's had a Im huge impact on us. Once the beans are harvested, they're delivered here to the bean plant. We store them and all winter long we clean them and we bag them and we ship them to wherever they're destined to. Of course, the domestic bean consumption isn't very large, so most of our beans will end up going to the export markets. Beans for consumers are all about the pretty. Everyone likes beautiful beans, and it really depends on what you're using the beans for and where you're from. For Pintos, we want a nice, light beige background, dark brown uh, spots and stripes. For blacks, you want nice dark color, uh, a nice bright white eye, and a uh, small seed size. For white beans, a consumer wants a nice clean white background, not very many veins, and very wrinkle free. The yellow beans are a huge success story for us. It was said that we will never have a yellow bean uh, produced in southern Alberta. They just will not mature here. And now we have released three yellow bean lines with spectacular like, Crayola yellow color. It's competing at the grade one level for color, which outside of the United States and Mexico is not common. In the, the pilot plant, the canning lab, we put the beans through their paces. We try and see how they react to being soaked, how they react to being cooked, how they react to being canned. The canning lab is unique in Canada. We get samples from Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan. The retort is a pressure cooker. It is a very fancy pressure cooker. It's very similar to what industry does, it's just on a very small scale. We run 26 cans per run of the retort. The industry does several thousands. If we don't mimic what the industry is doing, then how do we know that the beans that we're testing is going to be good when the industry gets, gets a hold of them and, and tries to sell them as a consumable product? And I can say, okay, we've cooked these beans. This line of black bean is much more black after cooking than this line of black bean. But that's not really good enough for industry or for anyone really. So we need to attach a number to that. And what the chromometer does is it can attach a number value to this bean is different because it is here on the spectrum and this bean is more black because it is here on the spectrum. So we have a texture analyzer. So we out 100 grams of the beans and put it through a loading cell so it squishes the beans through which mimics um, a person's mouth how it will feel chewing the bean. I was gonna say is this bean sample hard to chew? Is it too easy to chew? Some of the beans that we can they I mean I wouldn't serve them to anyone they're they're horrible whereas other times you can pour them out and it looks like it's coming straight out of a can you got from the grocery store and that's our goal is to make sure any new line that is being released is suitable to make it to the grocery store shelves. It's never ending. We're not the only ones changing. Diseases change, resistance fails. If you want to look at weeds and disease as the enemy, then the enemy is as adapting as fast as we are. I take a success when a bean line is released, when it gets picked up by the producers and grown, and we get their feedback, and if it's doing what they need it to do. It is very complex, uh, but it's also incredibly simple. <laughs> because all we're doing is growing the beans.